Income tax 2023-2024. Student loan interest deduction tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can lessen the sting from the IRS smack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, instructions, schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, starting at our standard starting point where we have our taxpayer, Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang taxman, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer, no dependent starting with w-2 income at the 100,000 we then have the standard deduction 13,850 to get to the taxable income 86,150 mirroring that in our income tax formula format the 100,000 the 13,850 to the 86,150 the tax starting at 14,266 which we see on the second page of the income tax formula there we have it all right, so let's go back to the first page and look at our point of focus this time, that being on line number 10, adjustments to income from Schedule 1. Let's go to the Schedule 1. That's not the Schedule 1. Here it is, page number 2. This is the additional income and adjustments to income. We'll go to page number 2, part number 2, which is the adjustments to income. We're now focused on the student loan interest. Now, the student loan interest is usually fairly straightforward. You're probably going to get more questions about, you know, the deductibility of student loan interest and so on and so forth, and possibly questions about education in general. Is it worth it with regards to the benefits that you that you get with, uh, with it and taking out student loans and so on and so forth? So obviously, if you're in a consulting type of situation, you might have tax questions basically about the tax benefits of things like student loan interest and credits related uh, to education. So that's one discussion that could come up. Oftentimes, if someone is going into or having a dependent going into uh, education or thinking about that, obviously, when you're looking at student loan interest, they wouldn't be getting a benefit to the student loan interest until possibly they stopped going to school and they might still be going to school, but they're paying back the student loan. The student loan was to pay for the tuition and other expenses. And if it was a qualified student loan, then you you might be able to deduct the student loan interest. And obviously, student loans are a political topic. So you have no idea which way it's going to go as to whether or not people will actually be responsible for paying back any of the student loans. At the you know, you don't you just never know because it's a political football. So in any case, but once the student loan interest in terms of a data input perspective happens, you're paying back your student loans, then you're typically going to get a documentation for it, which is fairly straightforward, like a 1098E for student loan uh, interest statement, which will have your information box one, the student loan uh, interest received. Now, obviously, once they receive student loans, if they got a if they got a good education, maybe they might be making a lot of money, in which case there's a phase out with the student loan. So they might not still get the student loans if their income is above a certain threshold. So for example, if I jump on over here and we say, let's say that the qualified student loans, let's just put 10,000 just to put a round number there. If I pull it over, nothing's happening. Que paso? What happened in other words? So we have the phase out. I won't go through the entire worksheet here, but you could see that there's going to be basically a phase out worksheet. So let's say that we had 
Actually, let's take a look at the worksheet in a little bit more detail. So the total qualified student loan interest paid not more than 2500 So we can see basically a cap here. Number two, enter the amount from form 1040, 1040SR, line nine. That's the 100000 currently our, our uh, income line. We're looking at kind of like a modified adjusted gross income type of phase-out threshold. And then enter the total of the amounts from Schedule 1, line 11. So these would be the adjustments that are put in place for when we're looking at kind of like a modified AGI kind of phase out calculation, then you subtract those lines, enter 75,000, 155,000 if married filing joint. So now we're looking at where the where the caps are going to be in terms of income levels, which of course is going to be different from a married couple versus non-married if they're married filing joint that is. And is the amount on line four more than line five? Uh, if no, skip to line six and seven. If yes, subtract and then divide line uh, six by 15,000, but not more than one. Okay, and so on and so forth. So let's lower the income threshold, shall we? Let's say that we bring it on down and say the income threshold is like 80,000. So now we're at the 80,000 and we're going to say that, boom, we got the 1667. So again, they're capping it at the 2005 and then basically phasing phasing it out from that point so then we can say okay well what if my income was down to uh 60 000 and go okay boom now we're getting the full amount of the 2005 because that's going to be basically uh the cap right so that's going to be the general idea now let's mirror that in It'll be different for married, so we'll do that in a second. But let's mirror that over here in our income tax formula. So I could say, okay, if I got this uh, student loan interest, it's going to be an adjustment to income. So I'll just add a line item here. And so we'll pull this down and we'll just call it student loan interest. Actually, they might not be a student anymore when they're paying the interest. So it's like an, it should be more properly called X student loan interest because now they're, they have graduated hopefully. And now they're like fully anyways, what you know what I'm talking about? It's the wrong name, but we'll put this, make this blue bordered. And then, cause there could be more than one possibly. And I'll say, this is going to be the total student loan interest because you might get one from the spouses so i'll leave a couple spaces and then we might put the max over here just so we know what it is so i could say max is at the 2500 so if they put something like if the thing said 10,000 on the data input maybe i'll do two two columns here then what would happen is i'm going to say it's going to be the lesser of It'll be say equals if, well, I can't even do that because it could phase out, but I can see those two and say, okay, it's going to be 2,500 because that's the max. So I'll, t I'll look at these two and say, I'm going to take this one. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to go d d and, uh, so there is that. So this is going to be totaling down to here, but then I'm going to say plus, and then I'll pick up the total, which I'll put down here. So let's sum this up. Sum equals the sum. Boom. Oh, there. Okay, so there's the 2,500, which pulls into the first page of the form 1040, 2,500. That gets us to 97.5. That 97.5 should be mirrored over here, page one of the form 1040. So we're at uh, 60,000 now. Let me change my income. Hold on a sec. Phase out happened. So I'm going to say 60,000 on the income. So now we've got 60,000 minus 25 gets us to 57,5. 57,5. 13,850. And that'll get me to the taxable income 43,650. 43,650. The tax calculated page number two. 5021. All right. 5021. Okay, so there is that. Now if they were if the mar if they were married, then of course those uh those adjustment the the cap would adjust, right? So I can go back on over and say, "All right, well what if 
we have a married couple, a married couple here, and we're going to say married filing joint. So then uh, if I bring the income back to 100,000, that's not where the income is. Let's bring the income back to 100,000 and go to my forms and schedule one and page number two. So now we still have the 2,500 even though we had the 100,000 in there uh, because they're, they're married, right? So now you've got a, the, still, the still qualified student loan at the 2005, 100,000 uh, uh, is, is, is not phasing it out from the 2005 as of this because there's a higher cap. So if I jump on over, note that now I could have, of course, student loan interest for the taxpayer or the spouse. So I could put, well, what if I had 10,000 in both taxpayer and spouse because they both had student loans, each of them getting their separate forms of the uh, 1099 or 1098 E. Sorry if I, if I called it 1099 before, but in any case, there there it is. It's still capping at uh, the 2,500. And so there's that. But we can also say, well, what if wages go up? And I could make wages just to make it for both people. Wages, this is going to be the spouse. So let's say it was 50,000 and 50,000. If I go back on over, so we're still at the 2,500 splitting between the two. And, and then let's say that we had one was making 100,000. So now we're at a total of 150,000. We're still at the 2,500. What if I go to, uh, 110,000 and then we're now it's starting to phase out right and then it'll totally phase out if i go up to like 150,000 that would be a 200,000 total then you know we're phased out here so you can see that basically phase out in this calculation and uh if i go back just to check it back to uh, the 110,000 to uh, hold on. I thought that was, yeah, there it is. And then that pulls in to the form 1040. So we can see it now I'm at 160 total on income. There's the 2082 bringing the AGI to, uh, 157, 918. So that's the general idea. Pretty easy for the data input side of things. Oftentimes the software can help you out, of course, with the phase outs. You might get questions about whether it be deductible or not. And clearly this education stuff leads to political questions and, and so on about the nature of loans and should they be forgiven? And what does that do to the price of, <laughs> of uh, education and whatnot? And of course you could get questions about people in terms of a tax perspective uh, what are the benefits of, of education? Is it worthwhile? Clearly, there's subsidization from the government of the education in the form of credits and deductibility of things and whatnot. But the trade off of that is the cost of education has been skyrocketing and 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 the quality might not have be keeping up with the price. So the question is, uh, so those questions, of course, are more planning type questions.